Good morning, everyone. My name is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk about mostly cross stitch, but also other crafts that I enjoy and a little bit of life thrown in. Um, I actually have a lot to catch up on with you guys this week because I did not do a regular video last week. I was on vacation. Um, I'm not going to I'm going to try not to talk too much about like the details of the vacation because I did do a whole vacation vlog um, that I uploaded last Sunday. Um, I think a lot of you have watched it already, but if you haven't and you're interested, go check it out. I had a really fun time um, in Las Vegas with my family and um, I tried to record a lot of it. So um, welcome to those of you who uh, are new to the channel. I hope that you like what you see and want to hit like and subscribe and come and spend uh, every every Sunday with me. Um, and to those of you who are retur returning viewers, thank you so much for coming by and um, sharing this time with me. Uh, we got a little black cat down here who's uh, I guess going to make his presence known in this video. I don't know, all of a sudden I think he knows when I start doing Sunday videos and has to come and, and Talk to me a little bit. Um, he did just fine when I was on vacation and um, my friend came and checked on him every other day and she didn't really see him, which was 100% expected. Um, one of the days she saw his little face peeking out from underneath the dresser, but um, but he was eating, which was good. And um, yeah, you ate, you ate a lot. Okay, I guess I have to, I have to, have him say hi because he's gonna be a pest until he gets his little bit of attention yes um this is Bagheera for those of you who don't know um my huge black kitty cat kitty boy okay I mean, that was enough he just needed to let me know he was here um so this is, drum roll, my floss tube number 100. Yay! Um, it's Sunday, it is the 18th of July. And um, I passed, while I was on vacation, I passed um, my two year floss tube anniversary. So um, this is kind of a little bit momentous, back from vacation, my 100th episode, um, officially a two year floss tuber. Uh, so hopefully this is going to be a fun episode. It might actually turn out to be a little bit long because I have a lot to talk about and uh, quite a few things to show you. So um, let's get going. Uh, before I do anything else, um, I have to give a big thank you, thank you, thank you to two people who bought me a coffee right before my vacation. Um, Kathleen Powell, I, I've got my notes over here and they're just the slightest bit too far for my glasses. They're in that mid-range instead of the close ones that the glasses work for, right? Um, Kathleen Powell and Don Frisch uh, both uh, bought me a coffee uh, right before my vacation and um, I appreciate it so much. I do have the link down below for those of you who want to um, to show a little bit of monetary appreciation. Um, certainly not necessary, but it is very much appreciated and, um, and it's great. So um, those of you who have chosen to do that, Thank you so much. And and recently Kathleen and, and Dawn did that for me. Um, they sent nice little messages. I don't always respond right away on the Buy Me A Coffee link because um, I don't go in there all the time, but I go in every so often and then I'll see the ones that have kind of accumulated. Um, I know when you've done it because I get a message on uh, my email, so that's the not thank you in the video, but um, I don't always go on to the actual site right away so sometimes I'll say thank you uh, I'll type the thank you and it'll be a, a little bit later than than the thank you that was verbal but um, anyway uh, as I said today is the 18th and that means that two days ago was my baby brother's birthday so I don't know do you can you still call him a baby brother when he is turning 51 I don't know um, but uh, I hope that he had a wonderful day um, I will see them next week, so um, uh, maybe we'll do a little bit of a celebration. I know he went out with his family to dinner, and they, they saw the new movie, um, new Marvel movie, uh, Black Widow. Is that it? The one with Scarlett Johansson? Anyway, they saw it. They said that 
they loved it. Hudson, it was a little intense for Hudson. I think he hasn't been to that many movies in the movie theater. He's only six. And I think the last one he saw was a definite kids movie. Um, and so this one was a little intense, you know, because Marvel type movies tend to be really loud and there's explosions and stuff. So um, he kind of was crawling up in his mom's lap um, the whole time because it was a little intense for him, but they all really enjoyed it. The older kids and my brother, especially. Um, Stacy was going to attempt to stitch in the movie theater. She called me and she's like, do you think that I would be able to see? And I'm like, I don't know, you can try it. Um, but she couldn't. And she had a kid in her lap almost the whole time, so. Um, so yeah, but they said that they really enjoyed it and, and had a great birthday dinner afterwards. And um, so I'm really, really happy for my brother and I hope he had a great day. And I look forward to seeing them next week and maybe we'll have pie or something. Um, even though we're all trying to eat healthy, you know, it's a birthday. Um, most likely we'll have like fruit, fruit and whipped cream or fruit, fruit and cool up. That'll be good too. Um, so my brother doesn't like cake, just as an aside. He never has really liked cake. So we've always gotten him birthday pie or birthday something else. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll have to make a pavlova and bring it over because that's really low calorie and and yummy. So anyway, okay. Um, I showed in my vlog that I did, I had a finish last week, Blooming Kitty, which I can't show you because it was a thank you gift for my friend Marianne who watched Baggy for me. So I left it here for her. Um, so again, if you want to see that quick little finish, it's right at the beginning of the vlog. So you can go see that. Um, but it turned out really nice and um, it was a fun little project to do and it got me another finish for the year. So I'm glad about that. Um, let's see, what else do I have? Oh, well, so as I said, the trip was total fun. I don't want to go into everything that we did because I have the, blo uh, the vlog, but there were, I would say three highlights. Um, we saw a show on Thursday night, uh, Tate Face. I never heard of him before, but he is really, really talented. I guess he was a finalist on America's Got Talent, which I don't really watch that show, so I never heard of him. But um, it was a very, very enjoyable show. Totally silly. I mean, they say at the beginning, this is a show of silliness. Um, he is kind of like, I don't even know how you would describe it. Like he's a, a mime. I, I was saying he's almost like a modern day Charlie Chaplin because he does sort of this mime and physical comedy. He has table over his face, so he doesn't talk. So everything is mime and reactions and he just, and he, does, he manipulates things. So he almost has like a magician juggler sort of aesthetic too. He does some juggling things that um, like, you know, the, that old fashioned from the old-fashioned 50s, 60s TV shows where the jugglers would do the plates on the the sticks. He did that, which is kind of really amazing to see in real life because you know it's 100% for real that he's doing, he's spinning those plates. And he did six. Um, he did that. He did a tiny bit of juggling um, and just a lot of comedy, a lot of like audience participation. He'd bring people up on stage and it was just really good. And it was... The thing that was really cool about it was that um, the adults thoroughly enjoyed it. The six-year-old thoroughly enjoyed it. He loved it so much. It was just a really good show. So if you ever have a chance to go see it, um, then I, I recommend it. And I do know that he tours too. He has a nightly show in Vegas, but he always intended it to be more of like a branding kind of thing, like Blue Man Group. So, although he is the original tape face, he has trained other people to kind of do the same act. Um, so there's somebody called T2. And so when there's a tour, I don't know which one is where, but, um, it, you know, he, so he can be in more than one place at the same time. Um, we did see the original guy though. I can, I'm pretty sure. Um, but in any case, he was great. So, um, if you ever get a chance to see him, whether it's in Vegas or you see a tour, um, I do recommend it. It's a good time. Um, so that was one fun thing we did. Um, we went to Stitcher's Paradise, which uh, um, I have some haul to show you. I will duplicate that from the vlog. Um, and we'll talk about a little bit more about Stitcher's Paradise when I get to that. And then the last thing that was kind of a highlight of the trip is um, Stacy and I went and got tattoos, which is not something I ever, ever, ever would have thought I would have done, but 
um, it, it was kind of like spur of the moment, not spur of the moment kind of thing. We talked about it all week and she had wanted a tattoo that, um, you know, she's been wanting it for a while. So she decided to do that. And I, after thinking about it, had realized that when I've put the temporary tattoos on, I've talked to you guys about that, of either the, the butterfly or the rose, um, that kind of remind me of my mom. I, it was bringing me a lot of comfort and I decided to make it permanent. I wasn't gonna do a tattoo on my finger and then did a little research and realized that finger tattoos fade very quickly and I feel, felt like it was too much of a thing to do to have it fade. So I ended up putting it on my wrist. It's kind of hard to show because of where it's placed, but it, yeah, it, um, it is a butterfly that is kind of like in flight taking off that way. I have it on my wrist right here. And the reason that I wanted it here specifically is because when I hold um, my cross stitch, when I hold my cross stitch hoop and I'm stitching, that's what I see. And as I said, the butterfly, the symbols of my mom, you know, if I'm gonna think of things that would remind me of my mom, butterflies, cats, purple, and roses, right? Um, because those are the things that she really enjoyed that were kind of uh, her spirit. Um, in my hands, when I look at my hands, I see my mom's hands. I don't see my mom when I, you know, look in the mirror, my face, my facial features. I don't, I don't feel like I look like my mom particularly or whatever. Um, but when I look at my hands, I see my mom's hands. And when I have a needle and thread or needle and floss, even more so. And so... It just, it gives me comfort to be stitching and look down and see this butterfly and um, and know that my mom is still with me, um, even though she isn't here physically anymore. Um, so although I never in a million years would have thought that I would get a tattoo, I'm not a tattoo person per se, um, this one has great significance for me and it is gonna give me comfort throughout the years of um, knowing that my mom is with me. So. That was kind of a big highlight. Um, for those of you who've never gotten a tattoo and are curious, like I was, like, does it really hurt? Eh, this one didn't particularly hurt. It, it was, you know, it's small. It's only like that big. So um, it took maybe like 10 minutes for the guy to actually do it. Um, it, it was more annoying than painful. Um, however, 10, 15 minutes of it was enough. So I don't know how people get big tattoos because if I had that annoying, that slightly painful, annoying thing and it went on for like hours, like people get big tattoos, that I don't know how people do because this is enough, it, you know, it, it didn't really hurt. Um, but <laughs> the aftercare was no problem. They put kind of like a stereo tape over it. Um, he said to leave it on for five to six or three to five days, or five to seven days, or I don't know what he said exactly. Um, it started peeling on the side, not over where the tattoo was, but it started peeling, so it was kind of hard to keep on. I ended up taking it off on um, Tuesday night or Wednesday night, um, and I've been putting some Aquaphor on it. Uh, hasn't itched, hasn't hurt. Tiny little bit of maybe a little bit of rough scarring, you know, skin, um, that I assume is gonna eventually smooth out and come off. And other than that, it's been like I wouldn't even know I got it done, except I look down and I see a pretty butterfly. And I think, hi, mom. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So that was kind of like a really uh, unexpected and, you know, Vegas thing to do, I guess. Um, but I'm really glad I did. Um, and I'm glad I had the experience with Stacey. Um, it was a fun experience to have. And... Um, a nice memory as well as having something on my hand that will be a memory forever. Okay, so um, yeah, I think that that's it about the trip. Um, except when we get to haul, I'll show you the stuff I got from Stitcher's Paradise and talk about Stitcher's Paradise a little bit. Um, I am starting this past like weekend. I mean, aside from like, yes, I went with my family to Vegas, but we still were kind of like enclosed as a family unit. We didn't go out into the world that much. I mean, we went to go see the show um, and we went down to the pool, which there's a lot of people there, but it was still pretty socially distanced and it was outside and that kind of thing. Um, but I feel like things are starting. I mean, I know the world is starting to open up a little bit, but I feel like my life 
is starting to open up a little bit, which is both cool and scary at the same time. Um, I know some of the local theaters are starting to mount productions that are going to be opening soon. Um, I actually, um, I went to a friend's house yesterday that I haven't seen. It's actually two ladies that are roommates that I haven't seen them in well, two years now. And Kip used to be a roommate of mine. She used to live in our family home for a while. And, um, she's, uh, they're both, uh, more like my mom's age than me. And, and, but I know them through theater and, you know, ladies that I've known for 20, 30 years. So they're very special. And Kip had like written to me a couple months ago and was like, when can we get together? I have a present for you. She kept saying she had a present for me. And, you know, we waited until I was vaccinated and then you know, we were both fully vaccinated and, um, then I had my vacation and stuff, but yesterday was a good time. And I, te I texted her, I'm like, are you available tomorrow? It would be great to get together. So I went over there and I ended up staying at their house for like almost eight hours. <laughs> we were just talking and catching up and everything. But when I first got there, Kip's like, I have a present for you. Now, last time I saw Kip, which was like two years ago or something, she came over and she had asked me about diamond painting because she had seen stuff I had posted and was interested in doing it. So I showed her diamond painting. I actually gave her a couple of paintings, I think, to start her out. And she became obsessed. So the last several years, that's what she's doing in her spare time, aside from doing theater. Um, and of course, this past year and a half with COVID, uh, there has been no theater. But she's a diamond painter. Um, and one of the things, apparently that she has done with the diamond painting is she has sent in photos of a lot of her friends um, and done diamond paintings of people. Um, so this is what she had for me. She gave it to me. I almost started crying. I'm not a big like, oh, I don't burst into tears, but I definitely got teared up. Um, those of you who follow me on Instagram um, know that when I was going through this stuff with my mom, um, I posted a couple of my favorite pictures of her and this one is my favorite and Kip did it in the diamond painting. Oh, and I'm getting huge glare. And I mean, can you think of anything more special than to have somebody do this? So it's like she had the um, the painting made. Um, there's companies that you can you know, send in a photo and they, they send you diamond painting. I did that with Frodo's photo um, that you guys have seen before. He's up there. Um, but she sent this one in and then she did it as a diamond painting for me. So, so special. And yeah, I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put it yet. Um, I actually have a spot that's kind of like, like if you were looking at it straight on, it, it's a little bit almost behind my TV. But when I'm in my bed couch, day bed thing, my angle is such that I can see it perfectly. So I might put it there. Um, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I wanna show you guys cause this is just so special and kind of goes to show like, our, our crafting hobbies, how meaningful they can be for people, um, because that certainly is. So I just want to share it with you guys. I don't know. Kip doesn't watch my channel regularly. I think she watches occasionally, so I don't even know if she's going to see me show this and say such a huge thank you to her and how much it means to me, but it doesn't matter. I still need to put it out in the world. So anyway, I just want to show you guys that. Um, okay. So I've been talking for what, like 18 minutes now? Haven't shown you any cross stitch, um, so I think it's time to get into that. I don't have any new starts or finishes except for Blooming Kitty, which again, um, I showed on the vlog. Um, but I did obviously work on stuff. Um, I took two projects with me on the trip and um, I worked, I stitched, oh, not a lot. Um, I, I stitched on the Saturday night that we left, I stitched a little bit on Starburst and Stripes, and then I did the Star Trek piece a couple times, and then since I've come back, I've worked on Star Trek and Stripes and some other stuff. So um, I will show you all the whips I've done. So this is really two weeks worth of whips, but it doesn't make it really any bigger because I just didn't stitch that much on my vacation. Um, you know, stitchers bring their stitching, but don't always get a chance to touch it. So um, the first project I brought was Starburst and Stripes Forever. Um, this. I started this this year because I just really love this pattern. I'm not a big patriotic stitcher, but I just love it. And so I figured July was a great time to work on it. Um, so 
I finished kind of the blue part and there's my like little close up of these. These starbursts are just, they're really fun to stitch. When I first started stitching this, um, I had to pull out like the first one I did like five times because I, I had to get into the pattern of how to do them. And then once you figure it out, it's like super easy. Um, you just have to make sure that you're always going into the center because that's what kind of like pulls the hole and makes it into the little eyelid -y starburst. Um, I chose my own colors. Um, I did a little bit, a little bit different than what was called for. Um, I still had, you know, the same number of blues and everything, but I used a white and then sort of a variegated cream and blue for the other white. And I'm doing it on like a fiddler's cloth. But this is really fun to do. And I just, I think it's really, really pretty. So I like those starbursts. I mean, I like them so much I was thinking like, maybe I should just take scraps and do those kind of starbursts and just fill a thing like just a bunch of flowers that would be really pretty um so who knows that might be something I do in the in the future okay so that was Starburst and Stripes and then the other project that I brought with me and I haven't emptied this bag yet so it's full of like hoops and scissors and all the stuff that I would need oh. glasses and needles. <laughs> this bag is just full of all my stuff and my extra light. Okay, so everything. Okay, so this is my Star Trek project that I'm doing for my brother, and I finished the original series, so I actually took it off of this thing, and I'm working on Next Generation. But basically, I got four charts from... Um, Fangirl Stitches, I think, on Etsy. Yeah, Fangirl Stitches. And um, I I knew I wanted to do Star Trek kind of thing like this. And there's lots of different people who chart these sort of like little people. Um, so I just looked at a bunch of them and picked the ones that I like the best. Um, they're not, you know, they're all very similar, but, you know, they'll have different, like they're taller or they're squattier or whatever. And I really just liked this style of the little people the best um and i got four four charts i got the original series i got next generation um deep space nine and voyager they're all the same they've got the characters all you know in a in a row and then the words at the bottom and i'm putting them all together and i'm doing this on oops I'm doing this on a piece of looking glass from under the sea fabrics um, when I was looking for a fabric for this and I was much more of a new stitcher at the time um, it's someone had said that this fabric really looked like metallic -y or you know like a mirror finish kind of thing and I thought that would kind of look like the whole of the Enterprise, so that's why I chose it. So I actually finished the um, top row of uh, the original series, except for the last two guys need their eyes, their bead eyes put in. Now, the, the eyes are the only things in these charts that I didn't like. I didn't like the way they were charted. They were charted just with a cross stitch, but the way, the way they were charted, the eyes were like touching the hair. And I just thought it looked weird on all of them. So my first thing was thought was to take them out and do French knots. And I tried that and my French knots looked terrible. Um, I don't mind doing French knots. And if I'm doing them in something like flowers or trees or something like that, then I have no problem. But when I was doing them as eyes, the fact that they weren't consistent sizes and stuff really bothered me. It made people, it made the little people look, look off. <laughs> so I pulled those out and I, I, uh, these beads instead. So these guys need their eyes, but then um, I moved on down to uh, Next Generation. This is actually Picard and started on that. So, and then it's gonna, you know, it'll be all the way down and then I'm gonna turn it into a, either a pillow or a wall hanging, I'm not sure yet. Um, my original thought was a pillow, but 
Um, they might like a wall hanging better um, so that, you know, pillow doesn't end up on the floor or stepped on or something like that. But we'll see. That is for my bro. He and I grew up watching the original series with um, our dad. And, um, and I never really liked Star Trek watching it as a kid with my dad. Um, but then when Next Generation came out, I was, I think I was in college already when Next Generation came out and, um, we watched it religiously. And now I really, I really love the more modern series as I love the movies. And so yeah, Star Trek has always been a kind of a part of our lives. My, I remember my brother had a Star Trek encyclopedia, this big, it was a soft cover, but it was a big book. And I used to watch, we watch, re watch the, the shows um, or binge watch them on DVD or whatever. And I would watch them with this encyclopedia because I loved looking up all of the people and characters and stuff while we were watching the show. It's kind of weird. And I miss it. And I don't even think you can get it anymore because now it's online and it's much bigger. But I liked having that physical book that you could look through and look at the pictures and stuff. Um, okay, so I worked this week, one evening and not for very long, on Chester's Place. Um, I just was wanting to grab something different that I hadn't stitched on in a while. Um, this is by Whistle Stop Stitcher. And I'm sure most of you know this, this chart was done as a charity piece to raise money for uh, cats, dental work, and that was done like within the first 10 hours or something of the chart and then after that it was it was re put out again and the proceeds now partially are going to an animal shelter so um i am stitching this with um amy sprinklestein stitches it's kind of like an honorarium piece um for her cat that passed away on in on valentine's day um and so she asked a bunch of people to stitch it with her um and of course I said yes um, I am going to change the animals down at the bottom a little bit um, to be my uh, most meaningful animals present and past and I'm gonna have the the present ones on one side and then I'm gonna put a little rainbow in the middle and put um, the three pets that I've lost most recently um, on the other side kind of on the other side of the rainbow bridge. Um, so what did I work on? Um, I basically just worked on more of the, the red flowers in the border since um, you've seen this last. I, I only worked on it for one evening for not very much time. But, and I pulled out and realized, like I thought I'd finished the border, but I had just finished the green part of the border, hadn't finished the red, so I worked on that a little bit more. Also, just did a little bit of stitching on my Moon Fairy. This was a project I just started spur of the moment one Friday night because I wanted to do something and I wanted to use this fabric that I had dyed and I wanted to use black silk. And so, yeah, so I started this and I did the Alan of the Moon first. Um, so that when I wanted to stitch something but didn't want to have to think about it, I could just do fill in. And that's basically what I did this this week. Um, one of the nights I was really tired, but I just wanted to get some stitching in. So I did two lengths of silk in the moon, you know. So it doesn't make much difference as far as the pattern goes, but um, just did a little bit of fill in. So I have a little bit more to do to actually finish this, the pattern of the fairy part. And I need to finish her wing and then the rest of the moon. And then I'm gonna do a companion piece to it on the rest of this fabric that's rolled up right now, which is what I'm calling Moon Fairy 2. Which will be this one. That's down the road. Oops, what did I just drop? I dropped my silk. I have it. The extra silk in a bobbin. Okay. 
Then the other two projects I worked on this week. Um, and I worked on this once last week before vacation and then I worked on it last night is the Wind Moon Fairy. This is a dimensions kit. The art, the art is by Nene Thomas. <clears throat> My first dimensions kit and um, I'm really actually kind of enjoying it. I like the way it's different you know, you have to kind of pay attention. Are you doing a full cross with two stitches? Or are you doing a half cross with two uh, two threads or one thread or three threads? Um, so I think since I last saw it, there's a lot more work done over here. Like I kind of went above the fold line or the, the, there's two pattern halves and I started, you know, going down and then I kind of went up a little bit. So it still doesn't look like anything. You can't really see the picture yet, but this is over in the wing. And then right over here, I think is where the cat is. Yeah, actually, I think you can see that. I think the cat, that's kind of the top of the cat's head that isn't done yet. And then the last project I worked on this week is The Gathering Place. No, I'm sorry, Night Creatures by The Gathering Place. Again, every time I say Night Creatures, I hear Night Fever <laughs> by the Bee Gees. So I, like, I start humming Night Creatures, Night Creatures, which is not the words, but that's what I hear every time I pull this chart out um, and work on it. So this is a chart that I got as a gift from Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Um, I had actually, I was supposed to pay for it. And then, you know, I had some drama and tragedy in my life when my mom got sick and got, and, and passed away. And I never got the invoice and didn't realize I didn't get the invoice because, um, because of what was going on. And instead I just got the chart and a lovely note from Michelle. And I'm stitching this with um, assorted flosses that I pulled, but the majority of them are MDA, Mystical Diamond Art flosses. This one is like so pretty. This one is called Mulberry. And this is a color in cotton. This is another MDA called Wine. Color in cotton. This is Schoolhouse Red by MDA. Um, this is watermelon juice. This is rose. I'm showing you all these MDA flosses because, um, Amy, who is the proprietor of Mystical Diamond Art, um, kind of took a hiatus during some personal life crap that she had to deal with, but she is coming back and she's going to be opening up her, um, monthly floss of the month club thing again starting I think in August so she recommends you go in you sign up for it now you'll get billed in August and um, I think the flosses are going to go out at the end of August so I will be able to show you new flosses at that time but um, I wanted to do a project that had a lot of her flosses so I could see how they looked and how they stitched and they're really they're very nice this one is algae um, I haven't used these other green and blue colors yet because I'm kind of in the the top of the um, the top of the project. Uh, this one is really cool. This is gourd, and this one is only actually really being used for the eyes of the creature, so it just adds a pop of color. But um, look at this one too, charcoal blue. Isn't that pretty? So anyway. Um, I thought this project was a perfect opportunity to use a lot of the MDA flosses and see how they perform. And so far, I think it's looking pretty good. This is on a piece of the Stitch Me fabric in Sleet. There we go. So I did obviously do changes to the colors in the project, um, mostly the changes is just that um, I'm doing the, the 
creature plant is more in pinks and corals and purples instead of like oranges and stuff. But I think it's looking pretty neat. So that has been so far a fun project to work on. And that is it as far as my whips. Okay, so next thing to talk about is haul, which um, really is going to just consist of the stuff that I got at Citrus Paradise. So as I said, Stacey and I went to Citrus Paradise. It was really exciting. I've never been to an LNS before, and so I was really anxious to go and see what it was like. Um, it was a little overwhelming. I said that in my vlog as well. It's a small space with crammed full of stuff. Um, and so it was a lot of input, you know, and, um, I had gone there. Basically I wanted to look at for a fabric. I found one, still don't know <laughs> if it's the solution to my query, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I got some other fabrics, like out of a remainder bin kind of thing. And then as far as charts, I just looked around a little bit. There was a couple things I saw on the wall and asked about them. One of them that I really liked, she's like, oh, that's like way out of print. Um, she goes, I actually have to take that down off the wall. One of them was a small chart that um, didn't the needle and I ended up getting that. One was a free chart, I ended up getting that. And then I just looked around a tiny little bit and I got a County Canvas project. Um, I just, it was so overwhelming. I couldn't just sit there and go through stacks of patterns and things. It just, I couldn't do it. Um, it was just too much. And physically, you know, my back was really hurting me being on vacation and stuff. And I, it was hard to stand. Um, but it's okay because I enjoy I enjoy shopping online. I, I'll be honest, I do. And as far as looking for patterns and stuff, I like being able to browse online. Um, but going to the in-person store was really fun. Um, I will do it again. If I'm in Vegas again, I'll stop by again um, because it is fun to go in and just kind of like um, absorb the atmosphere, the stitchy atmosphere kind of thing. Um, I could go crazy in there and spend a fortune. And I, I reined myself back from doing that because I knew that that would not be wise. Um, so I kept within sort of my, my budget that I had mentally prepared, like, okay, it's okay to spend this much. And I, and that's what I did. Um, so, um, while I was there, this was sitting by the cash register and I'd been meaning to get it anyway. I'd looked online actually to get it and was going to order it and ended up not for whatever reason and then it was sitting there so I went ahead and I got the Halloween edition of just cross stitch. Um, I've gotten this for the last two years and I have a couple back issues that somebody gifted me so basically with magazines now this is really the only one that I want. Um, the regular monthly editions they're fun to get but they are very expensive. Um, way more expensive actually than this was. This was like ten dollars I think. Um, and yeah, ten dollars. Um, but when I've gone to get magazines like at Joann's or whatever, they're like fifteen to eighteen dollars, and there's just not enough stuff in them that I want to stitch or that is my style. So, but these I've ended up stitching several projects out of um, the Halloween magazines. In fact, I have um, an ink circles that um, I'm stitching from one of these magazines. I mean, you can get the pattern you know, from one, two, three stitch or from anywhere now, but it was originally in an older Halloween edition and that's what I'm stitching it from. So, um, so yeah, so I do like this particular magazine, um, the, the Halloween edition. There's a lot of stuff in here that, um, I want to stitch or that I'm interested in stitching. And so I think this is, this is the one I just saw something that caught my eye when I was kind of like flipping it and I wanted to show you. Um, the pick your poison I think is cute oops yeah isn't that one cute oh I think it's cute and there's a whole like section of black cat stuff so of course I like all that but anyway so this is one of the things I got 
and you know it's a memory i wanted this magazine but now i got i got this magazine in las vegas at citrus paradise so it just makes it all the more sort of exciting okay so um the other charts that i got um this one i just saw it, it was made up into a little pillow um you know in the summer i kind of get into mermaids and just did a a mermaid and i saw this emma's for mermaid pattern uh by dames dames of the needle yeah and i got that one and then um, there was a rack that had counted canvas on it. Um, and I had seen most of them before. Um, so there wasn't anything that I felt like, oh my God, I have to get that because I'm not gonna be able to find anywhere else. This one I had never seen before and I just really liked it. Um, it's called Miss Otis. I don't know why when I see kitty things like this, to me, they're always boys. Maybe because most of, most of my kitties have not I have both. I've had boys and girls, but I don't know. They always, they look like boys to me. So although this one's name is Miss Otis, to me, it looks like a boy. Um, it also looks a lot like my cat, Herbie, that, um, he died several years ago now, but he was 21 years old when he passed away and feisty till the end. And he looked just like this, except his chin was black. So I think that I might stitch this and just change the chin a little bit and make him into Herbie. And instead of Miss Otis, it will be Mr. Herbie. But I really liked this, um, the way that the pot is in the background. Um, so I was really intrigued by that one. Now actually attached to it was a floss pack that was kind of expensive. And I asked her, I'm like, do I have to get the floss pack? And she goes, no, they're separate. And she pulled it off because this was only eight bucks. And I have so much of these kinds of flosses. Um, probably not you know this is gum nut yarns and but it's Karen I can pick colors that will look great and then the other chart that I got was actually a freebie pattern um, which I didn't know but it was stitched up and I'm like ooh, what's that and she's like oh that's a freebie from Nora Corbett it's called midnight meow and it is a black cat with wings um, I don't know what the colors are supposed to be I don't I'm not I'm not um, experienced enough stitcher to look at a um, a DMC number and know what color it is, except for 310. That's like the only one I recognize and you know, B5200, I know that. Um, but they had it stitched up with the cat was black and the rings, the wings were like this bright, shiny red. Um, it looked fantastic. So anyway, that definitely will be eventually stitched. Okay. So now we're on to the fabric. Let me show you first sort of the smaller pieces that I got. Um, their fabric room was kind of chock full, just like everything else there, but it was mostly linens. Uh, we've discussed this a thousand times on this channel that I just don't enjoy stitching on linen as much as other things. I have stitched on it. I've stitched some wonderful projects on it. My um, Cats in the Rain, which is right there, is on AB Stitch Me Linen. and I didn't have really any trouble stitching on it. Um, so, you know, linen is an, an option for me. It's just not my go-to, uh, usually. Um, however, wanting to get some exciting fabrics, these are all linens. Um, so this one is a picture of this plus. Uh, it's Kermit, but it's Crystal Kermit. Um, anybody who's watched me for any length of time knows I'm a glitter girl, I like opalescent fabrics um they just add that extra oomph for me so i like bright opalescent fabrics and that's what i tend to stitch on i mean the projects i showed you today half of them are opalescent you know and um so i was drawn to this i love green i love this color um so this was just a great piece for me it's a 28 count um and it's 13 by 13 by 18 opalescent kermit and actually, I have a project that's supposed to be stitched on Kermit. I have gone batty. I think that's supposed to be stitched on Kermit. So maybe this will be a perfect size for it. I don't know. Um, I don't usually do the called for, but maybe. Um, I got a small-ish piece of uh, conifer, crystal conifer. I think this is also a picture of plus color, but 
It was just a littler piece. Sort of a green. Like if I just look at it, I think green, but it is kind of a gray green. as well. And then the third smallish piece that I got, um, this one doesn't have a name, it just says Mystery Linen uh, 28 count. It just caught my eye, just the pink, the pinky peachy sherbertiness of it. Um, so it's, it's more orange on this side and lighter pink on this. Well, actually, I guess it has a front and a back. This looks like the back. So I guess this is the front. Hmm, I didn't really realize that. I don't care, it's pretty. I guess you could stitch on the back if you wanted it more like subtle. Okay. So then the main piece of fabric that I got which I've talked about for a while with you guys that I am looking to find fabric for this Bella Filipina Enchantress of the Abyss. So the model, it looks like was stitched, if this is even a stitched model. I don't know if it is or if it's just a photo, you know, a computer generated. But it was put on like this dark greeny color. I love the depth of this color, but I wanted something that's just a little bit more blue with some green in it, but more blue. And I saw this piece of fabric. Um, thought it was gorgeous. Stacy thought it was gorgeous. Problem is, again, it's linen. And I honestly, I've, I've put it, on with, you know, I put my glasses on, put a light on it. Will I be able to stitch on it? Cause the problem is, is that I can stitch on anything. I can stitch on the linen, but this kind of project is a bigger long-term project. And if it is not my favorite thing to stitch on, I'm not going to reach for it as much as I want to for this piece. So, so I'm still torn. This is the fabric. It's crystal mystic. I mean, it's gorgeous. And I know that that project would look beautiful on it. But again, because it's dark and it's linen, I just don't know if it's going to be comfortable for me to stitch on. I just, I don't, I don't know. And so I'm really torn. Um, so I came home, I mean, I have this fabric and I will use it eventually for something. Um, even if I end up cutting it up and using it for a smaller piece, that would be fine too. Um, I mean, if I don't use it, I could actually, you know, I don't know what I could stitch on here, but you know, anything it would be gorgeous. But I decided, okay, let me see if I can dye a piece of even weave similar. So here's the thing, and I mean, stitchers know this, and intellectually I knew it, but I had to like find out for myself, different kinds of fabric dye differently, right? So you can get the nice dark colors in like the linen and Ada, but the Lugana is sometimes hard to get dark. Um, and I, I got this fabric and it looked exactly how I wanted it to look, wet, and then it dried and it dried lighter. And so I soaked it again, and it looked perfect, and then it dried lighter. And I'm ending up with this like denim color. Um, it's really pretty, but it's not the depth of color that I want for this project. So I dyed this, I used uh, Rit dye, I used like a couple different blues, indigo and navy with some green in it. And I mean, it has the modeling that I want, I mean, it's really pretty. It's just not that depth of color that I wanted. I want this like deep, deep ocean. Like, you know, it's called Enchantress of the Abyss. She's not at the surface. She's, it's not, there's no light getting there. It's deep and mysterious. And I think this is so pretty, but I just don't think it's what I want either. 
Um, so I'm still torn. Now I did order one other thing. I went on last week and I ordered um, a fabric flare in, I think it's called navy. Anyway, it's a really dark blue. Um, I can't remember if I got an even weave or an Ada. I think I may have gotten an even weave because I didn't know you could get fabric flare in even weave. And I did add opal, opalescent to it. Um, I'm supposed to get it tomorrow. So you'll see it next week. Maybe that will be the answer because since it's a printed fabric and not a dyed fabric, maybe that will have the answer. Now, the only thing is, is it's the navy and it is slightly modeled, you know, printed modeled, um, but there's no green, which I kind of wanted that touch of green in the modeling. Maybe if I get it and it's perfect and I give it a quick soak with some green, the green will pick up in the lighter areas. We'll have to see. Um, I'll have to make a decision because I want to start this next month. So, um, yeah. So, you know, let me know your guys' thoughts. I mean, again, in, in looks wise, this is exactly kind of the idea that I had. Um, you know, this is really pretty. When I see it on camera, it's really pretty. It's just, it's just a little bit too like denim -y for me. I don't know. Um, colors. And you know, maybe the, the fabric flare will be the answer. Um, so maybe I'll have that to show you next week. And oops. Maybe I'll have that fabric flare to show you next week and uh, the mystery will be solved on what to use. But Anyway, that's the dilemma that I'm still having with this project. Um, I don't usually have a hard time picking a fabric, but this one, it's like, I think I have in my mind what I want. And the difficulty is finding the reality to match what I have in my mind. And nothing is matching exactly. Um, the, the linen is matching mostly in color, but not in ease of use. Um, this, is matching in ease of use and the sparkle that I like, but it just isn't dark enough. Although it is a really pretty color now that I look at it. When I look at it by itself, it's really pretty. So I don't know, maybe I'll have to like lay them all out and really do like a floss toss. But you know, we'll see when I get, when I get the other fabric flare fabric next week. Well, those are going to be my three choices and I'm going to have to make a decision. So, and then I'll probably ask you guys to help me. But anyway, let me know what you think about these two. Take me into my what I'm saying. So not just color, but we're talking linen versus linen, which may be difficult to stitch on. It's, you know, um, I may have to definitely have a light source underneath it. Um, so ease of stitching on that is not going to be as great as this where the holes just you know pop out at me this is more like the fabric that i'm stitching bellatrix on which is a dream i mean it's so easy to see and you know and that's what i want i want it to be a dream to stitch on because i want to stitch on it a lot this is so pretty okay so that's that's my dilemma as far as fabric let me know what you guys think um that is my haul. So I'm down to plans this week, today. Plans today, um, I think I'm going to spend the day, want, I wanna stitch. Um, I I don't know exactly what I wanna stitch on. I'm thinking one of my full coverage, maybe I'm kinda of itching to get a little bit more movement on those, um, or maybe um, some more on like Women with Fairy or something like that. One of my more elaborate projects, but, or maybe two or three, cause sometimes I do that. I'll stitch for a couple hours and then switch. Um, so I definitely want to stitch today. I want to relax, maybe take a nap today, but I still have stuff I have to put away from my trip. Um, you know, all of the chores I planned on doing yesterday, I didn't do anything cause I was never with Kip and Lorraine for like the whole day. Um, which is fine. It was, that was feeding my soul. Uh, it wasn't cleaning my apartment, but it was feeding my soul. Um, my, um, my stepdaughter Taylor is supposed to be coming over, um, next week. And um, I haven't seen her in forever, so um, that's gonna be great. And uh, so 
stitching plans or just to keep going with my July projects. Um, start getting ready for whatever August projects I am going to do and I am going to have a couple starts in August because I'm going to have a birthday start and my black cat birthday start and the mermaid project so I think there's going to be at least three. Um, I still haven't finalized what I'm going to stitch for my black cat birthday. Uh, the two, the mandalas, um, the consensus was definitely July. So if I, if I, if that's what I pick for my black cat birthday sale, I'm going to do July because you guys, um, only a couple people said August. <laughs> um, I love them both, but the August is more sunflowers and, um, the other one is more like a purpley flowers. And I think that everybody thought that that was like more me. So, um, I would probably do the July one. I also like the way the cat is on that one, but in any case, um, I still haven't hundred percent decided that that's what I'm going to do for my black cat birthday sale because I'm still kind of like, maybe I should do something really small. So I have a finish faster. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I still I have decisions to make. Um, but, uh, yeah, but, I mean, that's where I am. I'm, I, I need to prep for August, continue doing my July stitching, um, kind of try and move forward. And I really want to get some more finishes this year. Um, and that's, that's about it. Then, you know, have another week. I'm going to be at Erin and Stacy's next weekend. We're going to play D and D, which we haven't done in like a month. Um, so that's going to be, yeah, it's going to be fun. So I think that that's it, you guys. Um, a little bit longer video than I normally do, but as I said, I had a lot to talk about, a lot to show you guys. Um, if you, I lost my train of thought. I don't know if Laura is going to say, if you what? I don't think that was it. I think what I was going to say is until I see you guys again next week, please remember to be content, be kind and be crafty, be crazy if you're like me. Um, and, uh, I will see you next week. Have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye.